We have the new Hypersphere Bay Stadium. It's time to rise up. So today for my Beyblade show, finally I can say I have the complete collection of Beyblade Burst Rise because we will be reviewing the Beyblade Burst Hypersphere Orange Bay Stadium Arena. If you're wondering on the name for it, there's no updated name, it's just called Hypersphere Bay Stadium. It is orange, so that's a little bit of a cool thing. So if you're wondering, similar to the Rail Rush series, there's the Vertical Drop Battle Set, which was one stadium, and they did a second stadium during Turbo, where it was like the similar, uh, similar system, but just like a different format. So this time around, it is a bulky orange stadium that you can see is very, very big in size. So what I'm gonna be doing real quick is just comparing it to the blue arena. So I'm gonna put this on top just to show you right now. It exactly fits on the orange arena. This is the exact same size as the blue arena, but the difference is what's inside. Inside, it has the whole Hypersphere Stadium. It's a little bit hard to see with all the orange and everything, so I'm gonna try my best to have almost no filters in this video. But if you're wondering what's the difference between this and the vertical drop, I'm gonna show it's right here. So we can see the top angle, it's a little bit better to see. So you can see the stadium is deep, so that means when the base travels, it's gonna be a little bit different because the difference between this and the vertical drop, the vertical drop, I would say it's not as deep as uh, the orange arena. So when the bays are to travel, they have more room to travel, but it's not as deep when they're traveling, if that makes any sense. So we're gonna go back here. So this whole video, I think, is gonna be a perfect opportunity for me to give a guide to Beyblade Burst Hypersphere and what bays are good and what bays aren't good. And at the end, I'll tell you which stadium I prefer, but I'll probably have a separate video just trying to go in depth with it. So let's get started. And a thousand likes, so I cool. All right, so before we get started with doing a test launch on every single bay, I wanna break down the system because I wanna make sure that everyone understands how the system works. So whenever you open up a Rise product, you're always gonna see two different stats for the bay, the X variable and the Y variable. The X variable is runtime. It's the length of time spent moving around uh, the, the, along the brink or within the battle ring. So what that means, is basically, I'm gonna go back here, it's the time spent around either going on top in this area or going on the sides, going around to the side. Now the other variable that there is, is drop-in frequency. That is when you basically go back down from the brink. It's basically when your base sort of like does like a jump attack. It, it, when it goes back down to the center. So those are the two variables that it has. So I'm just gonna go back here. So what it basically means, I jump back down and I attack. So basically, I would say it's ideal to probably have, the, the more you have in X, I think it's better than having more in Y because realistically, if I'm supposed to go around, I'm most likely gonna get to the top. So we're gonna show off each of the bays. I'm gonna do a quick test launch and we're gonna see which one performs the best in this stadium. So let's first do Sword Valtriac. So let's see how it does in this stadium. So you can definitely see what I mean. So in this stadium, Sword is able to go around very crazy, but it does lose a lot of stamina. However, we could see that when it was traveling, it was jumping around fairly quickly. So let's try that again. So you can see how fast these bays are jumping. So when these bays are jumping very fast in battle, that's gonna mean a lot. That's gonna really mean a lot in the battle. Next up, we're gonna be trying Delahan D5. So the performance tip is uh, this one, the one that has the weird symbol that looks like a seven I don't, or an L, either one. We're gonna see how it performs in this stadium. So three, two, and let it rip. So you can see, it does a lot more jumps than power, and I honestly prefer this uh, tip over power. I think power is just good for getting the aggressive hits, but lacks a lot of stamina. So we're gonna try that test launch one more time. It's honestly a little bit crazy seeing how these bays can jump. 
So far, nobody has been able to go on the brink, but I think that usually only happens when they're in battle. So Ruder has the exact same tip as uh, Delon. So we're gonna see how Ruder performs. So the tip with like the weird little circle things on it, pretty aggressive in jumping. I would say Sword is just super fast. I would say Sword is probably the fastest so far for what I'm able to see. So let's try Ogre, which also has the same tip as Sword. 3-2 on the grip. So I would say it doesn't jump as much, but you can see how fast it travels. So that's, that's a good thing with power then. So power can travel fast. This is very bumpy. Let's do our next one, which is going to be Dragon. So with this Dragon Beyblade, as we can see right here, let's do test launch. We can see that it's going around that stadium. So with the Dragon Bay, you know, we can see that it can travel around decently, but you know, it mostly just goes towards the battle ring. So let's try that again. It's kind of weird seeing these bays hop. All right, let's try the other Dragon. Same thing. All right, we're gonna try rock. So this is all with Hasbro's charge. So I would say rock is, I mean, not rock, charge uh, for Hasbro, pretty good at traveling around, similar to sword. Next up, we're gonna try a Shindra. So a Shindra has keep hypersphere. So far, I think it's the best one. We're gonna see how it travels. So the good thing about Keep Hypersphere is that while it can't go around the vertical wall or probably go to the brink too much, it has a lot of good stamina with it. So that's going to be uh, pretty good for battles with Hypersphere. That's why I really like Keep Hypersphere. Let's try the other Ashindra. So it's going to be the same thing, isn't it? Oh, okay. Yeah, you see what I mean? It mostly just goes to the center because it's a defense type tip. So don't... Uh, I know you might think that it's all the tips look the same. No, just because the tips look the same doesn't mean they perform the same. All the tips are unique and their performance also reflects that. All the Hypersphere tips are meant to be used on this system, but if it's a stamina type, I'm still gonna go to the center. If I'm a defense type or a balance type, I'll still probably be in the center. They still perform like that. Next up is Solar Sphinx. This is where it's the weirdly weird performance tip that looks like uh, like an L symbol or I don't know. I don't, I don't know what this thing's tip is supposed to be. Anyways, three, two, and let it rip. I think Sphinx's tip is very unique because it's an attack type tip, but it's able to travel decently around the stadium while still being aggressive. So watch this. Whoa! So see what I mean? I think Sword is the best aggressive tip. Sphinx is like a mix between aggressive and not too aggressive. So next up, we're gonna do Cosmic Kraken. This is with the performance tip where it has uh, the arrow and the star on it. So three, two, one, let it rip. So the unique thing about this tip is similar to Shindra, but I would say this tip does an effective job at traveling around the vertical wall than compared to Shindra. Yeah, you can kind of see me. So they're, they're both kind of similar to Shinder. They're, they're gonna go to the center after that point. So next up, let's do Hydrax with its really weird tip. So Hydrax's tip, since it's all basically just like a circle thing, Hydrax's tip is probably gonna be, I would say, maybe possibly has this weird little like seer moon symbol, I guess. This will probably be, funny enough, maybe the best tip to travel around in this stadium. Last off is Wizard Fafnir before we get on to the battles. So with Withered, similar to Ashindra, goes around, but then after goes to the center. So now we're gonna go to the fun part. I'm gonna put random matches and we're gonna do battles in this stadium to properly test out these bays and show how effective this system is. All right, so now we've got the stadium set up. So we're gonna do our first match. It'll be Sword against Dulan. I'm actually super excited to test this out. I actually already picked up all my bays just to actually uh, do matches with. So we're gonna get started. Can I get used to this stadium is going to be the question. So for this one, I'll just do two rounds since I'm just trying to get used to it. This stadium is super chaotic. Like seriously. Look at him. Look at how they travel. 
level. Look at how that's jumping. I'm serious when I say this. It is a disservice not to have the stadium. It seriously is. And that's not, that's like legit. Like these bays cannot perform to their peak without this stadium. So next up, we'll do Rooter versus Solar Sphinx. And we'll do two rounds for this one. So let's first get Sphinx. So look at how these bays jump around and they're going, oh, I came back at the brink and I came to hit right at the end. Our winner is Solar Sphinx for this one. Let's do a second round with Rooter. Look at how it's jumping. One from the brink came back. Oh my God. I actually, I, I'm kind of liking this stadium. Before I thought this stadium might not work too well considering how uh, turbo was, but this isn't turbo, this is something else. So next up, we're gonna do power versus keep, gargoyle versus uh, ogre. Look at how these bees jump. It's actually fun. I'm enjoying this. And you know, the, it's, oh, it's always with power. It's always with power. The least I'll say is this. Even if you think these bays aren't competitive or whatever, it, it, they're at least a lot of fun. These are definitely a lot more fun uh, than uh, Slingshock, 100%. I, like, I'm pretty sure that's what Hasbro's focus was with these bays. Not really the competitive aspect, just how fun the bays are. Like, look at that! Gargoyle just jumped on top of Ogre! Like, that's fun! These matches are actually cool! And this is based off the stadium from the anime, don't forget! In the anime, there's a stadium just like this, and when the base jump in the air like that, that's so like the anime. Next up, we'll do Ace Dragon against Air Knight. It's cool. I actually like it. You know, in a way, I actually thought with the pockets, there are four pockets right here if you couldn't see. I actually thought that would hinder the fun of it. But considering how these bays work, I don't think the pockets will ever be really used all that much. Like when you're doing matches, I don't really think they're gonna be pocketed out. They're very big actually compared to normal pockets, so I can definitely see it uh, being used to some extent. Okay, last one. Let's try to see before we move on to the next match. Oh, this is sick. This is sick. This really is something else. And I'll probably lose. See, cause like the, the types do matter and the tips do matter with what you use. It's not all the same. I want to make sure people get that. So let's try wizard. Oh god, sword, don't fail me, please. Sword versus wizard in this stadium. Oh god. Hey, is it gonna be? Is it gonna be? Wizard. All right, let's do another launch. Whoa there! The, the one time when the pocket's actually used. Yeah, so be careful when you're launching these bays. These bays are very chaotic, so be mindful how you launch. Oh my god, I just went in the air. I'm loving this stadium. I'm, I'm actually loving this stadium. Like, seriously. Awesome. It's probably going to be Fafnir, but I might be wrong. Okay. Next up, let's do Rock versus Cosmic. No Cosmic, ah yeah, Cosmic's the one I hate to launch. There we go, all right. Rock, destroy it! Come on, Dragon, you gotta win. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So definitely I would think the tip that's on Kraken in the, in the Air Knight one, the really spiral design, that's gonna be super good for stamina if you're considering using it. That, if it wasn't more evident now, you need a hypersphere stadium if you want to work hypersphere base. I'm, I'm sorry, it's the truth. It seriously is the truth. If you want these bays to perform actually good, not like mediocre performance, you need this stadium. You really do.
All right. Ace versus a Shindra. So I think Keep Hyper Sphere is very good. Yeah, look at that. So obviously tips like, I guess, Keep Hyper Sphere and the Spiral one, the one that's on the Air Nice and on Kraken, those are gonna be good if you wanna conserve stamina quite a bit. The Fafnir tip I think is okay. I think the Rooter tip is just, uh, the one that's on Rooter and the one that's on uh, the other one is good. I, I still think Sword probably has the best attack tip, I'm not gonna lie. I think Dragon's attack tip is okay. Even though there's a lack of stamina, like I just think like the, the power tip is just good. For how it travels anyways. Okay. That's about that. Final match. A Shindra versus Hydrax. I saved this for last on purpose because I want to see how this is going to perform. So look at how I'm going around the stadium. Look at how I'm traveling. So that round design, that round design, maybe it was meant maybe for this stadium. Maybe they designed tips because they tried on two stadiums and maybe one tip is better on one stadium than the other. We're going to see. Yeah. So keep high for sure, it's definitely still at the top. So in terms of everything else and my thoughts for it, which stadium do I think is better? Do I think it's the white one or the orange one? So if you want to have uh, quote unquote competitive hypersphere battles, I would say the white one is better because it's less chaotic. And I, I guess that makes more sense and they can travel a bit more. If you're looking just to have pure fun and exciting battles, the orange one is the way to go. And remember that uh, between these two, the white stadium comes in a set that's expensive. So this stadium is cheap. Like how much does this stadium uh, cost right now for Canadian and American? So it's no, $14.99 plus tax, so it's $9.99 US. Okay, and how much does the vertical drop set cost? Vertical drop set is $49.99, it's $34.99 US. So, obviously if you want to make that call, I would say Hypersphere is definitely a fun innovation by Hasbro. I'm, I'm still not too sure if all these bays are really that competitive. I think some of these tips kind of good LED, but I don't think they're going to be able to be bearing or anything like that. Maybe they could possibly be an Extend Plus or Eternal, but I'm so happy I could finally do all this Hypersphere stuff. And uh, that'll be it for now. So thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. And make sure to comment which stadium you prefer, orange or white. But, but, but Zinky, my, my bro, you already did the QR code video. Oh my God, Zinky, wow, it's a QR code. <laughs>